word green. Green has a bunch of meanings. It can refer to something new and fresh, to leafy herbs or something covered in plants, a feeling of envy and having a pale or nauseated appearance, or a color on the spectrum between blue and yellow. Tongue twister time. Giggling goblins gobble green giblets. 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 Dog science. Is your dog jealous of anything you do without them? Do they follow you wherever you go? Sitting under your desk while you work? Jumping on your lap as soon as you sit down? Or demanding to join you in the bathroom? If that sounds familiar, you may have yourself a Velcro dog. Your Velcro dog may be attached to you just because dogs are pack animals and they like you. Or, if you give your dog treats and attention whenever they follow you, they'll keep doing it to keep getting the reward. Breed can also factor in, like with working breeds who are bred to work closely with humans, or lap dogs who are designed to be on laps all the time. There could also be a fear of abandonment, especially in rescue pups, comfort seeking in dogs who aren't feeling well, or full-blown separation anxiety. Fantasy Science Annoying Brian Murphy by applying real science to fantasy stuff. A frog hemoth is not real. A frog hemoth is not a frog. It's got hemoth in the name. It's not real. In Howl's Moving Castle, the Witch of the Wastes curses the quiet, dutiful Sophie after Howl, the witch's ex, gives Sophie the briefest positive attention. But what about you? Could you be cursed by a new beau's jilted ex-lover? Science says no. But that may not stop you from feeling cursed thanks to four main reasons. Reason one, confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is subconsciously seeking proof for a theory regardless of evidence. In other words, looking for stuff that confirms what you already believe. For example, let's say someone tells you they cursed you to be hungry, and you kind of believe them. When your friend then doesn't share their snack with you, you're primed to blame the curse for your friend's selfishness. Reason 2. Tradition if your whole family believes in curses, and you grew up hearing stories about curses being real, it can be really difficult for you to shake the belief. I mean, if that many people believe in something, it's gotta be a little bit true, right? Reason three, effect and motivation. If you feel better blaming being cursed for not getting a new toy rather than just random bad luck, you're more likely to believe you're cursed. And reason four, strange probability. Life is strange. It's often unpredictable and random, and we don't like that. We always look for patterns and explanations, even when there aren't any. And so if something strange happens, you might look for a deeper meaning. Like thinking that your suddenly dancing roommate has been cursed to dance, rather than just randomly being in a good mood. Science Experiments for Dogs In Not Another D&D Podcast, a number of characters have had the green flame blade cantrip. They used magic to make their swords dance with green flames. But did you know you can use science to make green flames yourself? If you're gonna try this at home like I am, make sure you think about safety first. So you can see I have a lab coat and goggles on to protect me from the fire. I have gloves to protect me from the chemicals I'm using. And I even have a fire extinguisher should everything go horribly wrong. And Arbor is here with me for this experiment, but I've made sure that he's full, I've made sure that he's tired, and he's also tied up to a railing in the other room so he can't get his lovely fluff any closer to the flame than this. So here, I have some isopropyl alcohol, which is really flammable, so it's going to create a nice flammable base for our experiment. There we go, a little bit in there. I am working today with an old candle holder case, so I know that it's got some resistance to fire. And this is the magic ingredient. This is copper sulfate. I know that it's blue, but trust me, we're gonna make a green flame today. I'm gonna take some of this copper sulfate, and I'm going to mix it with our rubbing alcohol. Put it in there. And now I'm gonna make it as dark as I can in here so you can see the flame better. And I'm gonna remove my gloves, because if the flame touches these gloves, they'll actually uh, melt, which we don't want. And now, are you ready for some green fire? In three, two, one. So we're getting orange fire right now, because the isopropyl alcohol is uh, carbon-based, and carbon likes to burn orange. That's why we get wood burning orange, so we get a whole bunch of stuff burning orange because it's carbon based. And wood is trees and life forms are carbon based. And I think that our poor little copper sulfate is not quite strong enough to overcome the isopropyl alcohol. And I don't have pure isopropyl, I only have 75%, which always tends to make it burn a little bit more orange. Alright, we're starting to get some green in there. 
And there we go! The heat from the fire excites the copper molecules, giving their electrons the energy to jump to a higher level. And when those electrons drop back down, they release the extra energy as green light. But if that didn't make any sense to you, that's okay. All you gotta know is that copper makes a sweet green flame to match any magic spell. Oh, that's very cool. Well, he's not impressed, but I think it's pretty cool. Kitchen Chemistry. Welcome to Chaotic Adventures in Baking at Dog Height. Since it's pie day, we're gonna make some pie cookies inspired by a delicious savory pie, broccoli and cheese. And it's gonna be an experiment the whole way through as I made up this recipe and didn't test it before now. Here we go! Working off of the heart healthy treat recipe we made before, we're keeping it simple and only using broccoli, Parmesan cheese, oat flour, an egg, and water. Learning from my past mistakes, I only added enough water for the dough to come together, making sure the dough wasn't too sticky so that I can work faster and hopefully give Arbor less time to snatch the rolled out dough. We also baked right after breakfast, my theory being that he'd be too full and tired to be really chaotic. Fingers crossed! Broccoli is high in fiber and vitamin C, and is good for dogs cooked or raw in small amounts. However, don't let your dog munch on a whole broccoli crown, as the florets contain isothiocyanates, which can cause mild to potentially severe gastric irritation in some dogs. Arbor was fully on board for the broccoli, the cheese, and all of the ingredients, really. And baking right after breakfast definitely curbed some of his chaos, making the process easy as pie. And finally, after waiting patiently and taking a nap or two, it was time for the taste test. Success! Looks like Arbor likes them so much, he wishes he could have 3.14 of them. <laughs> Who knew broccoli cookies could be so cute, tasty, and hilarious? And there you have it, jealous dogs, witches, curses, green flames, and broccoli cookies. A classic combination. If you liked this video, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you soon.